Hello, bonsoir. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, uh, we are a large panel, uh, but I'm sure everybody's going to have a minute to talk about how he feels, she or he feels. Um, let's start with a, uh, uh, well, let's start with introducing you first. <laughs> so, Paula Milne, creator and, and writer. Uh, Tom Schilling, if you've seen him on screen. Um, Friedrike Pecht. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry for my German accent. Um, Sophia Ellin. Um, uh, Tra Tracy Schofield, a uh, producer from Rainmark, and then we have Benjamin Benedict uh, from uh, Hufa, producer too, and then a third producer, Ferdinand Dona from Beta. Uh, so first question uh, for uh, Paul Amien as the, the creator, um, the easy question, uh, where did you get the idea from, uh, what was your first intent, and I'd like to uh, be more precise and, and say that you're not German yourself, you're British. So this is a German story coming from a British person, or is it? Um, year, is this on? Years ago, back in the day, um, I wrote a six-part drama for BBC Two called De Kinder. About, it was English speaking, it was for the BBC, about marital kidnap and the Bader Meinhofs and the Red Army faction, and how that divided and to the utopia of the Green Party and the nihilism of the Red Army faction. So I, I was very intrigued by that period of history. So I came to it with, uh, when it was suggested that I write something about this period, this 19, early 70s and the Berlin Wall and so forth, I came to it with uh, some knowledge of that period that I'd also lived through. Um, and I wanted to do it about divided families. So that was really my perspective. A question for the producers, uh, maybe first uh, for the German producers and then an extra question for the British producer. Um, what's fascinating, what's interesting about that period uh, of German history to you and, and how does it make it a great uh, place in time to tell a story? Um, I mean, what differs it from other perspectives we had on, on German history is that at that moment in time in the mid-70s, uh, basically, both systems, in a way, were frozen in the state they were. It wasn't uh, to be anticipated at the moment that this might end. And so the question, and I, I really admire the, the uh, take Paula had on this, is how it really felt to live there and to tell that from an everyday perspective of family lives and divided families. And so we talked a lot about, a lot about this fact that, that at this moment that you had either to adopt or you had to make a bold choice. And I think that's in the core of uh, this story. Do you want to add something? I think ben Benjamin said it. Um, while um, with the lives of others or um, goodbye Lenin, it's, um, uh, it was the last days of um, uh, communism was, which was dealt with. While well, here we are in the 70s and um, we have an, um, a tiny place, the two completely different uh, life conditions and um, uh, they are living back to back, um, what was the um, working title of the show, um, and you have two completely different realities of life and nothing, um, uh, this seemed never to end, you know, um, uh, that was, it's, it's fascinating in the 70s and not um, what was, dealt before the 80s on the end of them of this um, division so having these two um, completely different realities back to back and family divide families to be divided but it's obviously um, uh, a source of endless conflicts and Tracy drama. to go back to my uh, first question um, the show being written by a British and co-produced uh, by British producer too. Um, does it make it an international story for you? I mean, is is this uh, a something, a story that will appeal as well for every country as it would it would probably be for German viewers? Um, actually, the springboard, as Ferdinand has just mentioned, was the lives of others, and uh, 
when we saw the lives of others in the UK, I think a lot of tele television executives were thinking, my God, this is a completely unique period in history and a completely unique situation that these characters found themselves in. And it's a tremendously fertile ground for a drama about the human heart. And so, yes, it, it carries internationally, I think, because it is such a kind of unique space in time and history. Uh, and people's conditions and behaviour is, uh, you know, very, very fertile ground for a dramatist to explore. Uh, talking about being international, uh, Sofia, you're Swedish. Uh, so, uh, two questions in, in one. One, what attracted you to this story that might sound like very German at, at first? Um, and, and then, forgive my German, but sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ja, ich spreche Deutsch. <laughs> ja. Was war deine Frage nochmal? I don't speak German. <laughs> and what the did other you part ask? Of the, question, <laughs> the other part of the question, what, what was, what attracted, one, two, three, what did attract you to this story? I mean, both historically speaking and in terms of your character. Yeah, I, I was thinking about the generation of my grandmother and uh, the women that has sacrificed their own lives for others, that she, she was left by her her husband and then she like stopped living as a human being and as a woman and just sacrificed everything for her work and i was so fascinated by this period uh, berlin in the six in the 70s was already something that i studied and i watched documentaries and read books about it previously so i was thrilled when i heard that this is this is the period in this in this story Friederike, since the beginning of uh, this discussion, uh, we kind of already insisted on the fact that it's not a pure spy drama. There's more to it. And, and, and your character, very early on, we see her family, we see her living her everyday life. Um, so would you, would you say it's more than anything else a, a, a family drama? More than anything else, you ask me? Um, I don't know, I think it's like a Shakespeare play. Because, <laughs> yes, I think so. Because it's so, uh, it has so much um, different, interesting characters inside it. And it's not just about family, it's, uh, it's about inner conflict, it's about um, separated people, and it had so much. It's really um, like Shakespeare. <laughs> It's about love, it's so much inside. Uh, Tom, um, uh, as it was said uh, when we uh, introduced the show, uh, you were known uh, for Generation War. Um, it's uh, 40 years before, I guess, in German history. Um, so um, what, uh, what attracted you to this story? Do you feel that it's the same kind of historical um, Drama, I have to scream a bit because I understand that we don't hear each other very well from the other side. Um, is, is that also for you uh, an, an historical drama and that you feel that you can tell somehow part of uh, German history? Or is that what attracted you to the role? I feel that program is uh, very much different from Generation War, to be perfectly honest. Uh, it's much more plot-driven and um, it has more twists and turns that was um, Generation One uh, that, that, that wasn't about uh, Generation uh, War. Uh, that was about, um, I think, more about identity and, and stuff like that. But what I was attracted to was uh, basically the role, the character. You know, someone who always wants to be the best. That's something I can get along with, uh, that I can understand, and um, someone who, um, yeah, I mean, someone who treats women that bad, you know, in, because of his um, um, uh, ideology, you know, yeah, because he really believes in that system, and um, and he, um, that's that's much much worth to him than than um, personal um, uh, the personal tragedy. I found that very interesting. Because the Romeo thing, uh, the question also uh, is for uh, Paula. The, the Romeo thing is real. It's not just fiction. They no, no. They, they really had Romeo agents, right? Yeah. There was part of the Stasi that worked internationally. Most people think it was simply domestic, but in fact they had a wing that was international. 
um, and, and went everywhere to spy. Um, and one of the things they did was, was Romeo spies, and they, in fact, um, were pretty successful at it and, and targeted secretaries in Bonn and, and so forth um, and, and got a lot of state secrets. Um, and they were trained just outside East Berlin. Um, I have a double zero here telling me that it's, the time is over, but let's, let's do another couple of questions uh, before. Um, uh, one, I a just, question uh, I, I for the... I just want to very quickly Sorry, pay please. a tribute to Oliver Hirschbegel, because I think that um, uh, he, he realized something. A relationship with directors can be very delicate for all, both actors and, and a writer, particularly one who doesn't speak the language. But he brought this piece to life and he gave it something, and he made it look like a movie, which is obviously great, but he, he comes from a place of truth, and, and I think that is what he has achieved on the screen with, with the actors. Well, actually, my next question kind of goes through that. Uh, with the question for the producers, of course, when you do an historical drama, uh, you have the question of how you're going to recreate the period. So how did you do? Um, uh, were you obsessed by the details, like every cigarette we see them smoking has to be the exact cigarette they had back then? Um, and, and what were your limitations? Because, of course, it's not free to recreate that, you know? Yeah, you know Oliver Hirschbiegel was pretty much obsessed by every cigarette so, <laughs> and the originality of the cigarette. And... Um, you know, um, uh, that goes to the question, what is authenticity? And um, uh, of course you, get, you have to get all the details right, but what was important to have the spirit and the, the spirit of the 70s in Berlin that um, Sophia was talking about, which was a um, quite unique um, way of life and uh, this should come over not only in the details, but also in the colors and the feelings, the music, and um, I think um, we should name uh, Judith Kaufmann here, who um, captured the visuality of this period, and um, uh, of course this was, was important, but it's more than the details, it's the authenticity of the um, overall feeling, the, the specific feeling of Berlin of the 70s, and I think we managed to um, recreate it. To last question, uh, first question, kind of everybody um, probably have an answer for that, but we like to watch historical dramas and see today and as a mirror. Uh, so what would this story uh, tell us about maybe uh, current Europe or, or even the world itself? Paula? Well, um, the NSA ran that listening station, although it was in the British sector and they turned their sights west as well as east. We know that they still do this. We live in a, 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 a society now which is full of surveillance. There are no secrets. So I think that it has a conduit to, to a contemporary audience in that and other ways. And uh, otherwise, it would just be a curiosity piece from the past. And that, to me, is very important. And when I found that listening station and that the NSA had run it, then you knew you had some line to, to the present day. Sophia, I think you wanted to, to add something? I, at least you, you started to... Yeah, of yeah. course I, I'm thinking about uh, the history and compare it to today and uh, at least Sweden. We, in Sweden I'm very sad to, to say we have started separating families. So I don't know if the history is repeating itself, unfortunately. One last question. Uh, is this just a miniseries? Is this just one season? Or are you guys thinking that you might do a second one or even more? Do you have plans? Well, I hope so, because I've started writing it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>